All right, it's just after nine o'clock on Sunday the 7th of April, something like that. I've just arrived in St Albans. I'm going to play in a UK Open qualifier at the Raging Bull Club, run by my good pal John Gonzalez. This is like qualifier number eight. I haven't had a chance to play or anything like that. I'm kind of in a weird situation at the moment where I'm not working until my job doesn't start until April the 22nd, so I've not really been able to do anything. I've kind of been in a weird little limbo, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. I've played nine ball three times in the last two weeks, and before that, I haven't played it since the one time I played Alvin in January and I haven't competed since I went to the last IPA tournament. So yeah, I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, hopefully I'll get a favourable draw. I think you basically need to win four matches and you're in. So it's, it's doable, but it's a big ask. Especially as I might not be able to get to another one of these qualifiers. I have no idea how I'm going to play. Like I said, I played three times. Twice I played absolute rubbish and once I played pretty well. So I don't know. don't know how it's going to be, but um, yeah, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. It's all in the day and if I turn up and I start queuing well, anything's possible. If I turn up and I'm queuing like an idiot, then I'm going go to and out. Here we go, fingers crossed. Yeah, I haven't been here for a while. I've not been here since, what, November? Something like that. Well, I just won my first game. And I was unbelievably lucky, which is a good thing, because I played absolutely awful. Just, oh, I couldn't remember how to hold a cue. But. Oh, we're through to winners round one, so three more games to go, and then we're through. Come on, just keep it together. Well, I'm at Raging Ball at the moment. I must pay my first tournament of the year after the IPA. UK Open qualifier. Fingers crossed. In the first game, Let's see how we get on. Well, I'm back in the car. It's uh, looking like it's going to be at least an hour before I'm back on. I thought I'd come and sit in the car, have a bit of a break, bought some crackers with me. So I'm going to munch a couple of those, that'll keep me going, so I'll be my lunch. Get myself re-psyched up for the next match a bit later on. But yeah, that game I played against um, Steve Della. I couldn't get my body in the right place and be able to cue a ball for crap. I just got away with loads, basically. I just kept missing balls. I missed loads of easy balls. You know, when I'm playing well, I don't miss easy balls. So it's obviously something to... I kept missing and getting away with it. I kept going safe. I mean, I did leave him quite a, a few sitters and he won a few games and a few times he ran out of position. Certainly, I definitely got a big slice of the luck, which is good, really, because I need that. You need luck to get through these events, so I could do with that, keeping going for a few more games. If I can win three more matches, then I'm through. Fingers crossed, let's keep it going.
Well, that was good. I played. I had a really terrible couple of practice racks, but while I was knocking the balls around, I just the last couple of shots, I just kind of found a cue action, went into the game, and suddenly I could pot. So I played way better. That was pretty good. That was like 70, 80 percent of my game there. Once again, I got a little bit of luck as well. Two more matches of the luck would be very useful. Thank you. But yeah, no, I'm much happier with that. I'm happy going into my next game feeling like, oh, actually, you know what? Maybe I can actually play nine ball now and again. I did a few decent runouts there, and um, can run out the match. Well, technically, I've run out the two last two games of the match first because. I fluked the nine on the break, the second to last one, so I don't think that counts. Happy. I'm into the winner's qualifier. There's only 32 players, so there's only four players going through, but I only have to get to the semi-final to get there. So we've got the winner's qualification, and then the next match is the quarter-final. So if I get through the, through the winner's qualification and then win the quarter-final, we're in. So fingers bloody crossed. Two matches to go. Let's do it. Yeah, I've got some dinner. I've just played pretty well on my last match against Gabriel Vizzolacci. Again, I've got luck. I've got a lot of luck. Which is kind of bad, really, because I've played so well. It kind of takes away the way I... takes a bit from how I played. But um, no, I'm playing really well. Really happy with my game at the moment. Come on, one more game. Fingers crossed. It's so going well. I'm eating my dinner. I'm through to the last round. So win that last match and we're into the UK Open. Come on. Yeah, pretty happy I played in that game against Gabriel. First game, he broke, missed the opening shot, and I cleared up. Second game, I broke and cleared up. I had another break and run. Got a little bit of luck. Like, a few times he was in, and he, like, played a shot, and it went wrong, and he snookered himself. A couple of times I missed and got away with it. Again, I had run of the ball, but I played fucking well. Could have whitewashed him, really. I had the chances. I think I missed, like, two balls in the whole match, though, so I'm pretty happy. One of those I shouldn't have gone for. I was just taking a liberty. Fancied it, but it was a silly shot. Probably going to be about an hour, hour and a half before the next match, because um, there's a whole extra round to play before they redraw our round but yeah I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how i'm doing today so let's just hope that q action hangs along and i can get one more game in the bag it would be amazing to qualify for the uk open it really would oh, fingers crossed <laughs> Well, what do you know? We are back. So, uh, if you stay with us, thank you for staying with us. We're going to follow this through, through, the, through to the end. Glenn Murphy on table 31 there with uh, Hassan Khan, the guy that put me out. And, of course, we've got Simon Ayers level pegging now with Steve Della. So, Simon got off to a good start, and uh, Steve's now pegging him back. So Simon's at the table. And a bit, a little bit lively with that cue ball. I want to see where uh, Danny Gokul is. He's, uh, oh, there he's down the far end on table 28. I can't see him too well from my vantage point, so I can only follow him on Q score. And Q score tells me it's five apiece between him and Hassan. Phil shots, unfortunately, going down to uh, Gabriel Vasilash. Um, after leading 5 2, went down 7 5. Gabriel with a five, what a five pack, I nearly said. But five racks on the trot. So the guy's telling you about, if you look at the far table, stood there choking his cue. Looks like the drunk uncle you see people's weddings, the one that no one talks to. <laughs> Glenn Murphy, really nice chap, really nice chap. And if you can't see his cue in action, that is just something to behold. So he did all right. Meanwhile, Simon Ayres breaks off, having taken another one rat lead, 4-3 to Simon. It's not yet on cue score. Now, I'm not sure what's happening on Danny Ramesh Gok. I can't keep calling him Ramesh Danny or Danny Ramesh Gok. I just call him Danny. I'm not sure what's happening on his table, but I think his opponent's just miscued. I can sort of lean over at the side of my seat and have a little gander, but it's really hard work because there's a big pillar between me and that table. Well, Hassan Khan having a go at this one, and he's bounced it. So let's see what Glenn's awkward queen action can do for him here. But you never know. Well, 
Well, it's a bad shot, and he really, really did get away with that one. <laughs> but you know, this is going to be a um, David Alcady shot. Kill ball's part way up the. Uh oh, I missed it. Kill ball being partly up the table. Object ball being across the side, side cushion. Simon Ayres goes 5-3 up on Steve Donner. So now you know. It's a thing you just learned. So Steve playing out a decent safety there. So he's got Simon fully hooked by the nine ball, I think. Going to kick at this two rails. And he's left it. And more than that, it's a foul because there's no rail. So the thing about safety is you never know how good a safety is going to turn out to be once you play it. In this case, you would have expected the band to escape it and not give away a ball in your hand, but it did. Hit it off the second rail. Balls went into space. No rail, ball in your hand. Advantage Steve. This is an awkward shot though. Down the rail, bridging over a ball. Oh, it's not bridging over. You can actually see down the side of it. And hits it with authority. But that certainly looks a bit close to me. That one's gone just a little bit further than he'd like. He might just go forward two rails here to get onto the six. Steve with a speculative long back and it works at this point and he has held it well so Steve drops this in the score goes to 5-5 five, five. suddenly it's a best of three on table 30 it is all to play for remember this is for a place in the UK Open whoops sir now what's it going to call it? Well, technically, hit it with a tip, but that's, that counts as a stroke, and that should be a foul. But the other player let him off. But yeah, he, he, because he touched the cue ball with the tip, it counts as a stroke. That should be a ball in hand to the other player, but... You won't get away with that in the televised part, that's for sure. So Steve dodging a bit of a bullet there, I believe. <laughs> and reward Simon's generosity by snookering him. And fair enough, you don't play to lose. The guy cuts you a break, you make the most of it. But he puts it anyway, so... a great shot there by Simon. How's it going to work out? It's worked out. He's got a ball ball down the rail. Anyway, on that note, diving at the table. A straightforward eight ball and a straightforward nine to go on the hill. Yeah, they just go in, they just work. 4-1. So here's Simon breaking on the hill. Steve, of course, needs both remaining rucks. And as, as, as one's noted by the great Shane Van Boney, the more balls you put off the break, the fewer you have to box when you're running the rack. He's a little far off this three, if I'm honest. He's just overrun it a bit. Again, considering his options, he'd like, I think, to go real first and a kick out with that eight ball. He's massive. So let's see how he tackles it. 
So the four ball obviously passes at six. If we get shape on the six off this four, then the rack is over, and so is the match. It's just a little tricky, sort of bridging near the rail and near the eight ball. So this is um, missable. It's all off angle. It's got distance. This is all about bearing down on the shot. For me, I'd do nothing special with the cue ball, it's just go forward and run to the rail and set the six to the side pocket. But he's not me, and now this has become an awkward cut on the six. If he's going to win this, he's going to have to work for it. Tension here at the Crucible. I didn't like that shot myself. <laughs> so what's he going to commit to? A cut to the side? Now he's going for the corner. It is there, but it's not getting any easier now. Square to the eight ball. This one's not going to cut down the rail. So it's either a reverse back to the side pocket, I fall on back to the corner and round the houses with a cue ball on a safety looks like a safety and it's okay got a good A ball meantime there goes Glenn laying on the pressure to take it up to 5-1 I must confess, I can't wait to see Glenn on the uh, TV. I love seeing him in the UK Open, just doing what he does. <coughs> that's short, that's always short. That was always short. That was always short. And I think that could be Steve's last action in this tournament. Yeah, he's conceded. There's the handshake. So Simon goes through to the UK Open, the televised stages. Oh, I'm well chuffed. I just, it's 20 past eight. I won my final match. I've qualified. It was a really tough match. I wasn't playing as well as I was. I wasn't playing bad, but I wasn't playing as well as I was. And Steve played Steve Deller again, and he played so much better. It was a really tough game. A bit nervy. It's quite a lot of distractions as well. I went 5 2 up or something like that, or 5 3 up, and he came back to 5 5. And um, I was on a clearance, and there's loads of noise and stuff, distractions, people putting off and um i kind of made a real concerted effort i thought right last time i played in the tournament i was weak and i was getting distracted and i was really not feeling it and i try i made a real effort to sort of like double down my concentration and try not to get distracted and thankfully i, I knocked the balls in won the game and then won the final one to win seven five so uh, and that was a good clearance as well well no it wasn't a good clear it wasn't a clearance no, i didn't get on the eight ball i played a good safety on the eight and i got ball in hand and then steve conceded the game so i'm really happy really happy actually won some prize money which is good as well well, really, really happy with today. It all kind of went my way, really. I didn't get that much luck in that match, actually. It was much more like a sensible match. The earlier ones, I was getting a lot of run at the ball, but that one, there wasn't really any sort of good luck or bad luck. It was just a good match. It was a good match, to be fair. So, yeah, I'm going to the UK Open. Get in. I'm actually really, really happy. Oh, well, looks like we're going to Telford. See you in May.